Pixie Kids. So I wanted to talk to you about when I made chocolate chip cookies recently. And I followed the recipe, gathered my ingredients, and one step said that I needed to have soft butter. Um, so I put the butter in the microwave for a little bit just to get it softer, and it melted it a little bit more than I think was desired, but it was still good. So I figured I was going to go ahead and put it in the batter. I mixed it up, put the cookies in the oven, and they, they came out after the amount of time, but guess what? They were a little flatter than I was hoping for. And so I made the same recipe about a week ago, later, and turns out that I used soft butter instead of melted butter, and the cookies were much higher and much more puffier than they were before. So I should have followed the advice of the person who put the recipe in my recipe book because they knew what they were talking about to make the best looking cookies. Now, I have a question. Have you ever been given advice, whether it be good advice or maybe not so great advice? Have you ever listened to your friend's advice and maybe have gotten in trouble or it didn't turn out so great? Well, Today, the person in the Old Testament that we're going to be talking about is the great grandson of King David, who, remember last week, Jonathan protected King David. Um, and so, his name, the new king now in Israel, his name was Rehoboam. Can you say that? Rehoboam. Now, this one, I wasn't really familiar with his story either, so I had to do a little more research for myself, too. So Rehoboam became king when David's son, who was King Solomon, when King Solomon died, Rehoboam, David's great-grandson, became king. Now while Rehoboam was serving as king of Israel, the people of Israel came to him and they said, Rehoboam, King Rehoboam, when your father was our king, he was kind of harsh and kind of mean. And we were hoping that maybe you could treat us a little bit kinder than he did. Well, Rehoboam thought about this and he said, you know what, let me think about your request for three days. And after those three days, come back to me and I will have an answer for you about how I'm going to rule Israel. So the people went away and the king Rehoboam decided he was going to get advice or counsel for some, from some people. So he went to the wise leaders who had served under his father and who had given his father advice too. And so when he went to them, these men were kind of the older folks in the city. When he went to them, he said, what should I do? How should I rule these people? And the wise elders said, you should speak to them kindly. Speak to the people of Israel with kindness in your heart. Treat them fairly. Treat them better than King Solomon did. Well, King Rehoboam opted. He said, you know what? I don't really want to listen to your advice. Let me go ask my buddies, the people I grew up with, and see what they have to say. And so he went over to these friends of his and he asked them the same question. What should I do? How should I rule the, over Israel? And his friends told him, don't be nicer than your dad was. You should be meaner and harsher on them than he ever was. And so Rehoboam said, all right, I think I'm going to do that. So when the people of Israel returned for his answer after three days, King Rehoboam told them, you know, I'm not going to be nicer than my dad. I'm actually going to be much harsher than my dad ever was. And so, of course, the people of Israel did not like that. And so the kingdom ended up splitting in two different parts. So instead of just ruling over entire Israel, King Rehoboam only ruled over the, the tribe or city of Judah. And when, um, God provided King Rehoboam with godly advice, but Rehoboam was so greedy for power and control that he opted to not listen to that advice that he was given, and in turn, he lost the trust and the respect of the people who he was serving over. And whereas they would have served him forever, now they didn't trust him and they were kind of afraid of him. 
Now there are people in your life, I'm sure, who give you advice. Maybe they're your parents, your Sunday school teachers, your regular teachers, grandparents, and they've been around a lot longer than you. And I have people in my life who've been around a lot longer than me. And when they give advice, even though you may not always agree, or you may think, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, I wanna challenge you to listen to them. They've lived a lot more life than we have. And because God can speak through them and give you advice through them and through their experience. I know that they love you and they just want what's best for you. They want you to succeed and live a full and healthy life following God's plan. So I believe that this story is teaching us that God sends us people to give us godly advice for him to speak through these people to us. And we should listen and trust that they may be able to help us out of a situation or may be able to help us solve a problem because of the experience that they have had in their lives. Let's pray. Dear gracious God, thank you so much for sending us people who give us uh, godly advice. Help us to discern and figure out, God, what it is you want us to um, to know and understand. Help us to listen to that advice and to hear what it is that you have to say. We thank you and ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.